Watch our games, don't feel we are a dirty team. I personally don't think we are a dirty team. And I'm, excuse me, seven years in English football now, and uh, I witnessed situations who were ten times worse and were not punished. I think uh, we have been charged, I hope, for what happened on Sunday and not what happened uh, two years ago. Uh, we have to, to be conscious that uh, we didn't uh, behave in a perfect way like we should have, but as well not to be too much victimised uh, by what the media say. So six Arsenal players along with two from Manchester United face sanctions from the FA. It drew an apology this week from Arsene Wenger, uh, but the feeling at Harvey last night was that the club was being victimised by both the Football Association and the media. They're always out to get us, they really are. I mean, how many punch-ups do you see every week on the telly? And nothing happens, no one got hurt and for some reason they just have it in for Arsenal. I don't know why, but they do. I hope they're going to do the same with, you know, they're going to watch other teams as closely as they watch us. I can't remember a football thing being written this week in any paper or any TV or sports radio show, and it's just beyond, beyond a joke. The way the press have sort of exaggerated it has been uh, terrible, hasn't it? You know, they said that the players have overreacted. Well, you know, the press have overreacted ten times more, haven't they? They seem to love it. Anything involving Man United or Arsenal, and they seem to stir it up. If it's two other clubs, wouldn't have heard anything else about it. Mark, do you have any sympathy with the view that Arsenal are being victimised and the media, all arms of the media, us included, uh, are partly to blame? No, I don't have any great sympathy because uh, it wasn't the media who overreacted on Sunday. It was generally the, the Arsenal players. I thought that uh, Arsene Wenger's apology was somewhat given grudgingly. I can't understand why it took him nearly four days to come out and say I'm sorry. I just feel, you know, great manager, a very, very intelligent man. I don't know why on Monday morning when he woke up he didn't say, look, you know, sorry. Uh, we overreacted, we behaved wrongly, we got it wrong. For the good of the football club, we're saying sorry, we'll deal with it internally, and then he could move on. And the fact they waited four days alone was staggering to say sorry. Garth, I get the impression the FA wanted to move quicker on this. They want the whole system to move quickly. It doesn't matter whether it's Arsenal or anybody else. Uh, but now, what are the punishments to fit the crimes, really? What happened is now gone. It's all about now what the punishments will be. I think you're probably right. But I think Palios wants to make his mark very quickly. He's done that. He's brought it very quickly to the fore. Um, I think Arsenal have got a rich and glorious past. It's the image that they're tampering with. I think it's only right that the club and the directors do something about it. But in terms of the punishment, I think um, it's likely to be a fine, a hefty fine. A fine. And, they, and they may well find themselves with a match ban. How many? No one knows because apparently evidence is still coming through. Yeah. Uh, well, our it'll website will be banned for games. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, our yeah. website have been points. following this all week, right. Mark. And, and if you look at sort of, I think so far there's been nearly, I think it's nearly 120,000 votes come in. Less than what it is at the moment. Player suspensions 36 percent. Dock points 44. <laughs> I think I'll be surprised <laughs> if it's dock points. I, I think I'm docking gonna... points is, is, is not is it would be unacceptable. You must remember as well, as, and a parent made this point to me as I come into the studio. Kids around the world, not just in England, around 160 countries around the world watch, watch Premiership football. Two of the biggest teams in the country. So there is an image issue here, uh, as well as, as, as making sure that if their, their conduct is punished, it's punished in a way that is kept in perspective. So, Mark, what's the tariff here then? How, how many games? How many games should Martin Keown get for what happened? I think, he's, I think he's probably looking at four or five games. You think four or five games? I do, so, yeah. So uh, an, an elbow, one of I those, think that's or a punch is going to get that's three, severe. and this is going to get five. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying. No, I think, I think that's what look, I, th I think this now, th this judgment, right? It's bearing in mind Mark Palace has just taken the job. Off. This judgment will be the benchmark for, for everybody. Hang on, is it Mark Palace or is it the, the disciplinary well. committee? It's this, I think we're in, danger, overall, we're in danger of losing perspective of this. By and large, this was dissent. If, if they can prove violent conduct, then that's an automatic three-match ban. The rules are in place to deal with this. This, you know, we've got to keep it in perspective. Ban players, if they dissent, one match ban. If it's violent conduct, then three. We, we could talk all, all day about this, but f first of all, Manchester United and Ruud van Nistelrooy, does he have any case to answer? Um, I think Alex Ferguson's uh, assessment of it was pretty good. I think... He tried to get out of the way. He did exaggerate it. I think that's an I think that's players and respect issues within the game. I think he'll have lost a lot of respect in the game. But in terms of making any offence, he's, he's committed no offence. No, the, 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 pro the other problem with Van Nistelrooy is getting known in the game with the players as going down extremely easily. Yeah. Um, there's a certain thespian 
attitude to it as well. So he's, he's got to have a little look at himself as well. I'm sure Alex Ferguson have had a quiet yeah, word with that, him. That's a pro to pro res respect. Yeah. Thing. Mm. Uh, well, last night's win over Newcastle sees Arsenal extend their lead at the top of the table to four points. and um, beaten Chelsea at home to Aston Villa today. Manchester United go to Leicester. Southampton aim to extend their six game unbeaten run at home to Middlesbrough. Uh, the other big talking point of the week revolves around Arsenal's North London rivals. It's who will succeed Glenn Hoddle as the new Tottenham manager. Losing four of their first six games cost Glenn Hoddle his job. Third and bottom Spurs away at Manchester City tomorrow. Garth. For the past seven years, a red rain has been falling on Highbury. On average, every seven matches since the philosophical Frenchman took charge, one of his players has been dismissed. When his captain and the main culprit made the lonely walk last Sunday, it brought the total to 52. Is it time at last to recognise that something is wrong with Arsenal? These are two teams who dislike each other right from the highest level down. But that alone can't explain how a bland encounter suddenly turned bad. It started here. A collision, a kick and a card. He should maybe not have retaliated, but it's unbelievable that uh, he gets sent off in not done history. I've listened to Arsenal's comments. I'm disappointed to hear that because it's not a true reflection of what happened. And he's tried to brand the wider cheap. Then, in injury time, a penalty. Keown is clumsy. Forlan goes down. There are no great protests. Van Nistelrooy hits the bar and Keown can't contain his delight. Seconds later, it's the final whistle. All over the pitch, the red mist has come down. I think the FA will be looking at all the, the incidents at the end of the game. The two best teams in the country, and you get that kind of behaviour at the end of a match. I don't think it does us any good. The whole country will be now talking about it. We should be talking about something great in the game, and why not? On Wednesday, the FA named and shamed the guilty men. Itself under scrutiny, Wenger bowed to pressure and issued an apology. But it was heavily qualified, and it begs the question does the Arsenal manager have control of his dressing room and have the lessons from Old Trafford really been learned? Friday night, and Arsenal began their case for the defence. We have to accept the criticism because we do a public job, but as well, we have to put things uh, into perspective and uh, we are not animals uh, like people think of it. Ranks were closed, there's a new must-have T-shirt. Wenger's deepest apology was in his programme notes to any Arsenal fans offended. More significantly, the Old Trafford Six were in from the start against Newcastle. Back to Patrick Vieira. Now Parler. Lauren has stayed wide. And found himself plenty of space from which to cross. Brambles missed it. There's Henri! 1 0 Arsenal. Thierry Henri in the rain at Highbury. Titus Bramble with a wild swing at the ball. Henri with a simple finish. Patrick Vieira sent off at Old Trafford on Sunday. Limping off now at Highbury. Shearer. Is missed kicked, but Newcastle could still benefit here. Played in towards Lauren Robert. 4 1. Robert's first goal of the season. A real scramble in the Arsenal penalty area. Dyer. Oh, yeah. A slip there from Andy O'Brien. This is Jungberg up against Given and off the post and away. Gilberto! His first goal at Highbury for Arsenal. It's 2 1. Dyer uh, takes over from Lee Bowyer. He's got Olivier Bernard making progress. Bernard! What a thumping finish! 
the left back has levelled it for Newcastle United. Perez delivers. A point Jermaine Genus. Penalty given. Penalty given against Genus. Had his arm raised as he jumped with Seagull. Thierry Henry to try and give Arsenal the lead for the third time. Oh, so coolly done. If Wenger's loyalty is blind, his players repaid him again. But Arsenal now need to bank all the points they can. We were in the spotlight for the wrong reasons and uh, I felt the team was quite flat in training in the last two days and it was not, uh, I wasn't sure that we would find the dynamic, uh, the collective dynamic uh, to put Newcastle under pressure. And, uh, but once again we have shown uh, that mental strength and that the resources to, to win the game. What have you learned from the last week? Well, what we learned is, uh, I think, to keep always control of your behaviour, no matter uh, what, uh, how many frustrations you have. And uh, I think overall today we responded well, got no yellow cards, and uh, and it was a fair game on both sides because both teams uh, did very well. You have six players uh, who will be facing charges. Will you fight those charges as hard as you can? Well, at the moment we would uh, not come out on that because. Uh, we want first to analyse that uh, with uh, quietness and calm and to think about it and then we'll uh, uh, try to defend our players. Well, a good win, four points clear at the top of the Premiership, but it doesn't disguise what was a very bad week for Arsenal and Arsene Wenger. And is he right to defend his players and to go and defend his players against those charges as he says he will? A manager has to stand by his players, Gabby. When it's right, when it's warranted, you stick by him 100% if you think they have a case. Last week, uh, they didn't have a case. Arsene Wenger, the, he should have come out a lot quicker than he has done and held his hands up and said, my players, players acted unprofessionally, didn't show anywhere near enough discipline for what, for what I require at this club. Standards have dropped. We've got to sort it out. Had he have done that, had he have just said something as simple as that, I think you wouldn't have seen anything like the frenzy we've seen all week. The, the, the charges labelled against his players might not be quite as severe as, as perhaps they're going to be. So, uh, really and truly, he's only got himself to blame. I, th I think he's made himself look a bit foolish. Yeah, this and week. I, th I think, I mean, I go along with that. And when you look back with George Graham's response to the uh, event years and years ago, he was very quickly in, um, renounced what the players had done, find some of the players, the club find some of the players, and they took some of the pressure off what then followed from the FA. It well, eased things. Perhaps, Jim, if we look at the charges, the, the, the Highbury six, and, and see what they've got against them, the possible bans there in the column on the right-hand side is, is one reason why he's going to defend them, because he's going to be without key players for, for long periods of time. Yeah, and very serious, because the squad isn't the biggest at the moment. But it'll be very interesting to see now how Arsenal stagger that and how they manage the appeals process, because it can drag on for months. So I think they'll probably look to do things in dribs and drabs so it won't have that big impact on things. And, and of course, that will raise an issue as well with Mark Pallius at the FA. He's keen to kind of cut the time frame on all that sort of thing and really shorten it. And well, I'd we've like seen to how see it can be too. abused with Sol yeah. Campbell. Should be. Get it. Once, once you see incidents like we've had in the last week, you get them sorted, nip them in the bud straight away, and everybody moves on. I mean, this shouldn't hang around Arsenal Football Club forever and a day. They've been out of order. They should be punished for it. But then the game moves on, and, and that's got to be the most sensible way to deal with it. Arsenal feel that they're being picked on. They feel that they're... Um, unfairly treated, perhaps, by the FA and, and in disciplinary matters. 52 red cards in seven years, yeah. though, under Arsene Wenger, would suggest that it's, it's actually not that. I don't think anyone's picking on them. I love watching Arsenal. I think when they're at their best, I don't think there's, that, I don't think there's anything to compare with them. I can pay them no, more, no higher compliment than that, even better than United when they're at their very, very best. But clearly, something is wrong there, and clearly the manager is the one person. He is responsible for that team, Gabby. When it crosses that line, if things aren't happening, if things aren't going right, he can get it sorted out and, and, and clearly he's the only one that can do that. Yeah, it's nonsense to suggest that people are gagging up against him no. and it's a very weak argument as well. Um, the, f the fact that, you know, what happened last week in the media um, have been so strong that it's weak to say that the media are responsible for that. No. Thanks very much, guys.